uh, start recording this um, so that we're, we're able to keep it for posterity's sake. If anybody would like to, to catch this um, who can't be with us in these four weeks, they will have the option to, to, to tune in and catch these videos and hopefully be able to make a little more sense of the, of the, the, the offices of prayer and the prayer book. So uh, uh, a couple of things that, um, that I wanted to, to bring up um, that I feel like I, I, I probably didn't uh, make clear enough um, last week. And I, and I, um, you know, this, this is a, a nuts and bolts. How do you, how do you pray the office? But I also want um, to give just a, a, a you know, 10,000 foot view of what happens in the, in the, the uh, daily office. So there are, there, there are two purposes. I mean, the reason that, that, that we pray the office is to be exposed to scripture and also um, to pray. So last week um, we talked about prayer in the most, uh, most general sense. Um, and we, we talked about it being, um, it being um, sanctification of time, right? You, you, you stop at different points in the day um, to enter into God's near presence. That is, that is the point of, of, keeping the prayer book office and that looks like scripture reading and also prayer because these are two ways that we we encounter um god if you think about it you know scripture is at the the heart of everything that we do as christians right every sunday when we get together there's always an old testament lesson there's always an epistle there's always a psalm and there's always a gospel lesson so scripture the reason that we we hold up scripture in the in the daily office is because it is the record of god's saving deeds and creation so um, it's important that, that we remember who we are, but more importantly, I should say, um, whose we are. So um, last week, we, we talked a little bit about, um, about the scripture portion of, of, the, of the office. Um, so today, we are going to move, um, move our attention to the, the second part of, the, of the, uh, the daily office, which is, in fact, uh, prayer. So um, we we stopped last week. If, if my memory serves me uh, correctly, um, right at the at the end of page ninety six, on over onto the top of page um, ninety seven. That was where I think we ended up um, drawing our, our time um, to a close, and I think that's where we will pick up. That's kind of the uh, the uh, halfway point um, of the of the prayer book office. Um, the other thing that, that, that I wanted to say before we move into, into the prayer part of the office is um, don't forget about, there's an owner's, the owner's manual on page 194, right? We talked about um, that being, um, that being the, the place to look to get answers about, about how to do things. Um, and I would also tell you um, that um, anything um, in the prayer book office, you, you, you may do it, um, you may do the additional things that we, we talked about those, those seasonal, um, those seasonal verses of scripture to open, right? Remember we talked about at the beginning of the office on page 75 and 76, um, you, you may do those things, but just because you can, doesn't mean that you have to. And I wanted to be uh, more clear about that than I might've been last week. The, the entire point of learning to pray the office is that you develop a, a richer prayer practice and if there are if there is content involved that uh, makes that difficult for you to do, um, then don't forget you may, but you're not required, right? You know the old the old uh, adage in in the Anglican um, school of thought about uh, about confession is um, all can, some should, none must, right? Um, so so if um, if these things um, are 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 helpful if they're edifying by all means do them the the prayer book office is really clear about about when to use those um and and when so right now um it being the season of easter um we would use those those verses of scripture to open the office on page 77 um hallelujah christ is risen the lord is risen indeed hallelujah on this day the lord has acted we will rejoice and be glad in it um you feel free to do those things um, but you don't have to. If you are more of a of a straightforward straight shooter, and you want to, and you want to get get ahead and get going, if you're if you're pressed for time, um, the the office um, can can begin without any of those other bits um, on the front end with with simply the the invitatory and the psalter. So on page eighty, 
um, you would begin, Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your, your praise. Um, the other thing that, that I wanted to point out to you, you know, don't forget that um, you are the officiant, meaning if you are going to pray the office, don't, don't go looking around for the, for the priest. Don't forget that the, the, the office is written to be used in two ways, and this is where some of the confusion comes. Um, the officiant can be the priest up in front of the church in investments. It can also be, be you. So if you are praying at home by yourself um, with, the, with the beginning of the office on page 80, um, the officiant and the people, well, if there aren't, aren't any other people, then you would simply um, say aloud or to yourself those two lines together. Lord, open our mouths, uh, excuse me, Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Um, if, if it is, um, you know, don't, don't think that you have to say this out, out loud. Um, if in, um, you can, you should, if you're with people, but by yourself, um, you would just say, say both parts um, together. Um, the final thing that that I wanted to uh, to to uh, lift up to you, who's mowing grass at eight o'clock at night? I don't know. I, I hope that's not um, distracting uh, anybody. Um, the other thing that that I would point out, you know, right now we talked about we're in the season of Lent, so you would omit the confession, right? But in the season of Lent, or in the season of, of Advent, or really even in, in in ordinary time, which makes up half the year, if you would, um, if you intend to use the confession and, and absolution, um, which would which is on page seventy nine, so you could use the confession of sin um, to to open the office. If you're going to do that, I wanted to point out just a couple of of, of things that are are interesting to you. So so you can see. Um, there is the there is the exhortation that that would would make sense to use if you are praying in in, at, in the nave at the corner of Central and, and Greer. Dearly beloved, we've come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth His praise, to hear His holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him. Let us kneel in silence with penitent and obedient hearts, confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. If you're going to use the office and you're going to pray and you're going to open with confession, you can do that. Um, I will tell you, if you're, if you're praying in the comfort of your home before you get going for the day, it's a lot easier to simply say, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Um, so the, uh, the, uh, the rubric says, um, silence, um, may be kept again, may, but uh, if you're going to pl start plowing through it, th then, then go ahead and, and get on with it. It also says kneeling. Now, if you have a, a kneeler, any point that, uh, that, that talks about kneeling in the, in the prayer book office, um, if you have a kneeler, you can kneel. Um, also I told you last week that I typically pray, um, on, on seated, um, in silence, um, in the comfort of my home, and I don't do any of those of, of those uh, liturgical um, postures, though though you you can. So you see, there is that there is that that confession. We we confess our sin. Um, this will sound very very familiar if if you've been to a to a, a holy Eucharist on a Sunday. And the thing that I wanted to 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 bring up to you, um, it says on the top of page eighty. The priest alone stand and says. Now that that envisions uh, that that envisions Mother Miranda or myself standing in front of the church on the chancel step and you kneeling in your in your pews. And in that scenario, it would be Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you all goodness, some other power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Now, if you were doing this at home, right? These 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 rubrics matter. It says a deacon or layperson using the preceding form remains kneeling and substitutes us for you and our for your. So what does that what does that mean? If you are not praying with anyone else, if you are praying by yourself in your home, you would um, the 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 absolution would be God have mercy on us rather than on on you because um, because priests. Um, have the have by their office the ability to to absolve sins. Otherwise, you would say us, and then you would say, "May God have mercy on our sins, uh, rather than on your sins." So, um, one office can be used um, in, in in different ways. So, those were just two two things that that we didn't get to last week, um, or or I, I should say, I was uh, I was 
trying to keep my my children from screaming and uh and i i failed to include those those details so so i would just hold those two things up to you as um as as things that are that are are interesting um about the office and the way that it can be adapted in in different ways but really just um anything can be done it does not have to be done um and i and i wanted to to hold that up because i i do think there's a little bit of a of a learning curve about about how um how to use this so uh tonight um i'm i'm gonna sort of scan through any um any questions at this point about um about the the scripture portion of the office before we before we we move to the to the portion um that we'll we'll spend the rest of the time discussing the, the prayers in the office all right i'm just, just scanning through it it uh it looks like a lot of people are, are listening in and uh I'm glad to see everybody with us. So if you um, if you if you have a question and I don't catch uh, I don't catch you waving, you can also use that that chat function. Um, okay, so so tonight um, we're going to spend the rest of the time talking about that second half of the office. And so um, we we start with um, the Lord's Prayer, right? So there there's the Apostles' Creed um, where we where we affirm um, our faith. That, um, it's also interesting whenever we whenever we uh, pray um, and and confess our sins and then affirm our faith with the uh, the uh, Nicene Creed on Sundays we we say we believe well we we use I believe because it's uh, each end of each individual uh, person is is a is a, a disciple so we affirm that that belief ourselves and then we pray the the Lord's Prayer again um, the the Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Um, that that doesn't have to be included if you're praying by yourself. Uh, it, you know, in fact, if you if you say the uh, Lord be with you and somebody answers back, that you know somebody else in your head, you might need to get that get that that voice checked out. Just um, simply um, omit it. So, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. That prayer is ancient. Um, the, the Lord's Prayer is found in both Luke and Matthew's gospel. Um, again, um, thinking of, think about the way we are, we are recognizing um, the, you know, the distinction that that is is the right one to make is between god and god's creatures right rather than rather than um you and me as as being in an opposition or or compass uh, competition with each other we say um our father rather than my father right because we are we are uh, united in our our creatureliness of, of of being god's creatures and god is the father of of all of us, we are joining ourselves by saying "Our Father" and by by praying um, the the office um, in general. We are joining ourselves with Christians across time and space to give God thanks and praise. Um, the other thing that um, so um, the the uh, second part of the of the the sets of prayers for the for the. The, the prayer book office um, is the is the suffrages. You see that on, on the bottom of page 97 and uh, beginning about uh, halfway down the middle of page 98. Um, a suffrage is a is a short form of prayer. Um, it, it comes from the word um, suffragium, which means intercession. So essentially, um, these two sets of, of suffrages prayer uh, suffrage a and suffrage b are are ways that um, we we can uh, offer intercessions uh, prayers of intercession um, to god so if you are if you're praying the office um, at home you'd say both parts the uh, the the v and the and the r um, that simply means versicle and and response it's a way of of differentiating uh, for for multiple voices um, so um, that would be helpful in in the nave if you're praying for yourself um, or praying alone um, you would pray um, using both of those so it would say show us your mercy um, O lord and grant us your salvation you would still use those 
those same two uh, two in in um, in harmony with each other, but just in your own voice. If you're praying with someone else, if you're praying with a spouse, you're praying with a friend, you're praying with your children, someone in your life, then you could um, you could break down and do the the versicle and response um, in 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 two voices um, as well. That you know that that same call and response. The the uh, word liturgy actually means the the work of the people, uh, meaning it it is it is about um, it is about having a, a a holy conversation when there are when there are multiple people and when when it's just you um you you make these prayers um with your with your own voice either aloud or or silently um so then um do you use set set a or b um that would be up to you um, uh, let's look at the um, at the uh, the uh, content of uh, of the, the set of suffrages a show us your mercy O lord and grant us your salvation clothe your ministers with righteousness let your people sing with joy give peace O lord in all the world for only in you can we live in safety lord keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth let your way be known upon earth your saving health among all nations let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. That's a wonderful set of, 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 of intercessory prayers. I prayed this, this set of uh, suffrage, suffrage set A uh, myself many, many times. So let's look at the content of uh, suffrage set B. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Um, you, can, you can alternate those. Um, I will tell you, if you can start to get in the habit of, of, of praying the office, you will develop your own, your own rhythm. Um, so if you, wanted to, um, if you wanted to alternate those um, one, one, uh, one day then the other, you know, Monday set A, Tuesday set B, um, you can do that. Um, again, just as you're, if, you're, if you're brand new and you're trying to figure out how to, how to manipulate this, this strange set of pages in your prayer book, you might just want to stick with with set A for a while uh, and 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 work with that to the point that you that you um, you know where you are in the office and it becomes familiar um, in a way. Um, and so you know, I would encourage you to do your to do your 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 preparation on the front end so that when you actually move into the time of prayer, you're not doing this. You know, you're not going. Oh, oh, here it is. Here it is. Um, I would tell you too. Look. Um, you're going to make mistakes um, if you are going to 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 take this on as a spiritual discipline. Um, you are going to have um, days where you you completely feel like you're you're out of sorts. Um, don't quit. Um, I can't tell you how you know I can I can pray. Um, I can start to feel really locked in, and then I say to myself, you know what? I've I've read the wrong psalm. And then there's a sort of, you know, sort of cyclical thinking. You're going, man, I, you know, I, I'm really, I really should be better at this, et cetera, et cetera. Hey, guess what? You just read a Psalm and you've been, and you've been in prayer, right? So, so um, this is not, this is not the 10 commandments. This is a spiritual tool and any of it is better than doing nothing at all. So if you, if you, um, if you inadvertently read the wrong set of readings for the day, so be it just just keep moving forward and it it does start to get to get easier um you see the the uh, rubric um uh, which um is that that this uh short sentences and the the italic font um the officiant um this is about two-thirds of the way down page 98 um the officiant uh then says one or more of the following colleagues now guess what uh that's you so so that means um, you are going to pray a set of prayers, um, uh, or or the uh, the uh, colic for um, um, the the efficient was then says one or more of the following colics. Now the the first thing that you see is the colic of the day, uh, and you go well it doesn't it doesn't tell me what that is. Um, 
my my own spiritual practices, I try to say the collect of the day from the from the uh, the Sunday that we are in. So so just hang with me. I'll I will I will point out um, what I am uh, talking about. We we talked um, about the the two sets of the uh, the uh, two sets of, of lectionary readings right there there's year a b and c which we which we keep on sunday we're talking about something different with the uh, the uh, prayer book lectionary um but if you look at um page 226 of the book of common prayer the the collect for this past sunday uh, right keeping keeping in mind in the in the uh, the uh, church the um the week starts with um, with the 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 eighth day Sunday, so I would read um, for this whole week. I would pray um, the collect for the collect of the day. I would pray the, the collect the seventh Sunday of Easter, the Sunday after Ascension Day. Um, now again, if if you are really getting in the habit and this makes sense to you, do it. If you're going well, that's too many pages to keep up with. Um, then just drop down, um, keeping keeping your your finger on page ninety eight, where we are in the uh, in the daily office. Then then drop down and pray one of those those collects that's printed there on the on the page in front of you. Um, but for the uh, the uh, collect of the of the day, I I've made it a a habit to to pray the the collect from the from the previous Sunday because um, today is Wednesday and the the seventh. Uh, seventh week of Easter, right? So that hopefully hopefully makes sense. So the so the call for today would be, Oh God, the King of Glory, we have exalted your Holy Son Jesus Christ with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. I pray this the the uh, the collect of the day the the the, the collect um, from the preceding Sunday, because think about uh, last Sunday, we, we remembered the, the, the Feast of the Ascension, and the collects on Sunday are so incredibly rich. The, uh, the prayer book has this, this, um, this great, you know, it's, it's one of the masterworks of the, of the English language. It can, it can say um, so much with so, so few words. So um, these wonderful collects that we hear on, on Sunday I find it very helpful um, as I am as I am uh, stopping to sanctify time and 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 move myself closer into God's presence. Um, these short, rich uh, prayers can be can be very very helpful. And I find by the time I get to Wednesday or Thursday, you know I'm I'm hearing stuff in in the uh, the uh, the colic from this past Sunday um, that I didn't hear on Sunday when I was. When I was worried about if, if my microphone was on and if we started on time and if the ushers had enough bulletins, right? You know, the more time you spend with scripture, the more time you spend on prayer, um, it, it has this marvelous way of, 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 of revealing itself. Um, so I've, I've kind of started preaching and I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll stay on, on task for tonight. So, um, yeah, so, so there on page, page 98, um, the collect of the day. Now, if you are, are praying um, on, on Sunday, um, there is a specific prayer that you see on the bottom of page 98 um, on Sunday. And, and I think we talked a little bit last week about how the, the, the prayer book envisions us each uh, having, a, having a, a, a prayer life um, during the week. And then we get together on Sunday and we feast and we celebrate. So, it, it, yes, it is perfectly um, uh, acceptable, and I would say wise, to pray morning prayer before you come um, to Holy Eucharist on a, on a Sunday. So you see there's a colic for Sunday on the, on the top of page 99, a colic for Friday, um, a colic for Saturday. Um, if you are able to get into the habit of praying the office every day, you're going to really start to appreciate having, having these prayers that you hear once a week. Um, one of the things that um, that everyone needs to be mindful of if you're going to pray the office is that you're actually attentive and prayerful and not just, uh, you know, it, it can be so easy to get together on Sundays. And um, by the time we actually bring all of ourselves to to church, to um, to worship, um, it can be over, 
right? Uh, so, you know, how easy is it, is it to get to church? Um, and you're there, you were physically there, and you can say, uh, uh, the Lord be with you and also with you, our Father, our Heaven, hallowed be the name, you know, and you can sort of go through the motions. Uh, but if you, if you actually um, bring all of yourself um, and, and, and actually read and actually try to, to, to pray, um, those same, those same prayers become much more meaningful. It's the same way with the office. Um, you know, we are uh, people who, who like, uh, rapid entertainment and, and quick, uh, quick response. You know, we're, we're used to, um, to instant gratification. Um, so it's, it's helpful to slow down and not say, oh, well, you know, here I am to the prayers again, but, but, my, but my pot of coffee is ready, so I'm going to go ahead and just fly through this. And by, and by, uh, by having different colics for different days of the week, it, it makes it much more difficult for this to become rote and sort of procedural. Um, see, I want to make sure I got a, um, uh, yeah, a, 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 sorry, I'm, I'm just looking at my, at my, my notes here for myself. Um, so, so I would say, you know, you know, my, my advice to you would be if you are going to pray the office, um, on Sunday, pray the colic for Sunday. If you're going to pray, um, on Friday morning, pray the, the, uh, colic for Friday. I mean, that's not, you know, that's not, um, that's not a, a, a huge re uh, revelation. Um, I would also say spend some time getting to know these colics and then pray them depending on, um, what station of your life you find yourself in does that does that make sense if you are if you have been up through most of the night anxious and worried and fearful it would be very wise to pray in the morning the collect for peace on the bottom of page 99 oh god the author of peace and lover of concord to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom Defend us, your humble servants, in all the assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversary, or excuse me, any adversary, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. If you are, if you're feeling particularly stuck in your in your in your uh, in your spiritual life, if you get down the down the point, um, you know, and you and you start to have a really strong prayer life. Uh, or, or maybe you're you are adding uh, morning or evening prayer to your already strong prayer life. You're going to hit inevitably. You, you'll you'll hit kind of a dry patch where you're going. You know, I'm just not feeling it anymore. Well, in that instance, it makes a lot of sense to pray a collect for the renewal of life. Oh God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadows of death into the morning, drive from, far from us all wrong desires and climb our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet in the way of peace that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day we may when night comes rejoice to give you thanks through jesus christ our lord amen um if you are if you are praying you know so so, so spend some time and and get to know these um i would also tell you um i i um I'm going to to show you guys. Um, you know, I told you last week that I want us doing the uh, the uh, work um, as if there is not a a single shortcut to make this more uh, more accessible. Um, but I I do want to show you one thing, uh, one of these tools, um, and it is a very very simple tool. Um, are you able to see this? This is a little piece, uh, probably like plastic interfacing from a sewing kit with what? Uh, there are one, two, three, four, five, six ribbons. And this um, I stick. This is the first prayer book that I ever owned. This was, you know, we were talking about the owner's manual on page 144. Um, this, is, this was kind of my, my, my how-to guide when I became an Episcopalian as an adult. So I keep this little tool which um, I think somebody gave me this, um, but you can buy them at the Episcopal Bookstore. They're, they're available online. If you're, if you're crafty, that looks like to me, uh, six little ribbons and some hot glue. Um, but it's important to have something like this because of the amount of, of page turning, right? Which can be kind of, a, kind of an obstacle. So, so I'd, I wanted to, to show you this um, because there are other sets of, of prayers um, that might be that that might or might not speak to um, to 
to where you are internally within your own spirit um, when you are praying the office. Um, if you look, if you flip over to page 814, there are, uh, see, uh, you know, there's so much great stuff in here um, that, that goes beyond um, hold the Eucharist right, right one and two. Um, if you look at page 814, um, there are a, um, there are a, a number of colics. Um, actually, if you, if you flip over um, to the page before, um, eight, 800 and, um, 810, there is a, um, what would you call that? This is a, this is a, um, well, it's a, it's an index, right? It, it's an index of, of, of different, of different prayers. Feel free to add as many of these as might be meaningful um, for your practice of the office. Um, prayers for the world, prayers for the church, prayer for national life, prayer for the social order, prayers for the, uh, for the natural order, prayers for family and personal life, um, other prayers. Um, those, are, those might be a nice supplement to, um, to um, the, the, the evening, um, the colics in, in uh, evening prayer. Um, if any of you have ever served uh, the, the altar as a, as, a, um, as, a, as a Eucharistic minister, um, we gather in the parish hall and we always say, be present, be present, O Jesus, our great high priest, as you are present with your disciples and be known to us in the prayers and the breaking of bread. Well, guess what? That comes right from the prayer book. If you look, um, I forget, it's either number 64 or number um, 65 in that, in that set of prayers uh, from, um, from, the, from, the, from the prayer book. Um, so feel free to add, to add as, as many of those as, um, as, as might be helpful to you. Um, so just, you know, um, for instance, I mean, um, do any of these sound like they, they might be um, helpful for, for us in a time of pandemic? Um, you know, what if we look at, 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 um, uh, colic number 49 for the aged, right? You know, right now, uh, everyone is concerned about, about those who are, who are shut in and potentially more, uh, more at, at risk from this COVID-19 disease. It might be appropriate to start your day with this colic, um, in addition to the ones that, that are, that are in the office. Uh, look with mercy, O God, our father on all whose increasing years bring them weakness, distress, or isolation. Provide them homes of dignity and peace. Give them understanding, helpers, and the willingness to accept help. And as their strength diminishes, increase their faith and their assurance of your love. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If you have an aging parent, hey, guess what? Uh, you know, people talk about there's an app for that. There's a collet for that. So, so, so use any of these um, as, as might be um, edifying to your soul. There's another set of, of, uh, of, of colics that I wanted to point out to you. Um, if you look at page 461, there are a set of, of prayers uh, for, um, for those who are sick. So if you look over at, at page 460, um, 461, there is a, uh, you know, I, I I pulled out my little tool here and I, and I'm having to look longhand. So give me, give me one second here. Um, yeah. So, so if you look um, at, uh, at page 461 prayers for use by a sick person, well, I don't know about you, but I think um, it, it sounds awfully good to ask for trust in God right now. Right. So that, that collect on the page of uh, on the top of page 461, Oh God, the source of all help, so fill my heart with faith in your love that with calm expectancy I, make, may, I may make room for your power to possess me and gracefully accept your healing through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Um, this is all, um, these are optional, but they are, are not, not, not necessary. Um, if you look at uh, the page before on page 458, there are prayers for the sick, um, prayers for a sick child, prayers before an operation, prayer for recovery from, from illness. These are all, these are all wonderful uh, prayers that, you know, if you are, if you wake up with, uh, with the uh, flu, you can pray the office and, 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 and make your prayers um, for those who are, who are ill, including if you're ill yourself. Um, 
I can tell you too, my, my favorite collect in the entire prayer book um, is on the bottom of page 461, the collect in the morning. Um, the prayer is, this is another day, O oh Lord, I know not what it will bring forth, but make me ready, Lord, for whatever it may be. If I am to stand up, help me to stand bravely. If I am to sit still, help me to sit quietly. If I am to lie low, help me to do it patiently. And if I am to do nothing, let me do it gallantly. Make these prayers, make these words more than words and give me the spirit of Jesus. Amen. Um, you better believe two months ago when we were trying to figure out what life at St. John's looks like when we're not together and we're having to, uh, to figure out how to do church um, online. Um, you better believe that this prayer was, was in my, my, my daily uh, morning prayer practice because I was going, I don't know what's coming. Uh, I hope it's not a call that, that someone that, that I love and care for at St. John's is sick. I don't know what's coming, but be with me, whatever it is. Um, and so, you know, there are, there are, are many things, um, many things that, that, um, you can, you can do. Um, so let's see here. Any, um, any questions at this point? Uh, I'll, I'll scan through and see if, if there's a show of hands or if you, uh, I, uh, I'm not seeing any, any chat, uh, which is just as well. I'll, I'll keep going. We're, we're, uh, making pretty good headway here. Um, so if you are, are looking at the, the, the prayers section of the, the daily office morning prayer, um, there is a, there is a logic to it, right? So, um, so we, so we pray, um, to intercede for others, right? Think about those suffrage sets, right? Where we are, we are, we are offering intercessory prayers. So we start out interceding for others. And then we, we just spent a little bit of time talking about uh, praying for the different stations of life that we might find ourselves in on a, on a day-to-day basis. Um, and then if you notice on the, um, about um, the middle of page 100, um, it says, then unless the Eucharist or a form of general intercession is to follow, one of these prayers for mission is added. Well, why? Right. So we're so so we pray for others. We pray for ourselves, and then we pray for the mission of the church. Right. So there is a certain logic to this. It, uh, prayer is 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 not simply presenting God um, your wish list in the way that a child might think about prayer. It. But but we do um, we do intercede. We do pray for ourselves. We ask for God's guidance, and then we also pray uh, for for the mission of the church. Um, so if you um, just Pick, pick one of these. Again, I would tell you either, either choose one that is particularly meaningful to you uh, or you can set up um, some, some kind of schedule for yourself. I can tell you too on, on, on pieces of the office like this, um, I, I, I really, um, I try to move through these different prayers uh, slowly and methodically and I, I let my, my, my eye fall on the page uh, trusting that uh, that the the near presence of God that I'm consciously moving into is going to guide me um, into the prayer that I need to offer. Um, so you know, don't um, you know you know we can hold on so tight to prayer that we strangle the uh, the life out of it. Don't forget that that we are we're intentionally entering into God's near presence. Um, so it's it's perfectly fine to 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 just let one of them sort of leap off the page to you. Um, so so uh, for instance. Um, O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed son to preach peace to those who are far off and those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So we, so we pray for the, for the mission of the church. And, and what is that? Um, well, the, uh, the uh, good news is that a, um, a, a new way of living um, which we are baptized into and nurtured and um, with the, the sacraments, life in, in Christ, um, a, a new life that is, is not our own has brought hope and peace to the world. That's what the, the church is supposed to do. Our, our, our life at St. John's is a response to this gift that's been given in Christ. And um, we have a story to tell. We have the, the, the greatest story that the world has ever, ever known. Um, so we, um, we pray for the mission of the church that that all people might might have the hope in Christ that we know as as his followers. 
Um, so, so that's kind of the, uh, the uh, flow of, of the prayer portion of the office. And um, I said it before, I'll say it again, rubrics really matter. Um, after we have prayed a, a prayer for mission, um, if you look about uh, a third of the way down page 101, you will see um, there is, it says, authorize intercessions and thanksgiving may follow. And I can tell you um, what what I do in that in that space. Um, when it says um, it says may follow, I would say should follows. Um, this is the this is the 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 part of the of the prayer book office in both the evening and um, and and morning prayers, where I bring my 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 hopes, my 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 fears, my concerns, my agenda, and present it to God. Right, so so this this to me is the moment in the in the prayer book office when I move away from the catechism of Scripture that has that has taught me um, what I need to know for this day, and then the church has taught me to pray in this way. And this moment of authorized intercessions and thanksgivings, that's when I say, "Okay, God, this is what I'm wrestling with. Right, this is what's going on in in my family. This is what's going on in our city." And so, um, this is the place. Um, where where we can allow those things that that um, that are are weighing us down or our our, our thanksgivings, um, we offer them up in this in this moment. Um, what does that look like? Well, there there are are all kind of different ways of, of doing it. If you are a a list maker, by by George, have at it. Have a have a a piece of paper and and keep a prayer list. Um, not a thing in the world wrong with that. Um, I can tell you what 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 I do, and again, you know, I'm 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 one person. I you know I don't claim to have the the sole authoritative take on on how to do this well, but I sit in this moment, and I um, I'll show you my own altar um, at, at at home before this this class uh, is is up. I I. I have a couple of, of candles lit and I have an icon and I stare at that, at that icon and I think about it as, as holy examination. So I sit there focusing on the image of, of our Lord on, on an icon and whatever comes into my mind, um, I, I just sort of hold it there for a moment and, 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 and say, okay, this has come to me, you know, what, what am I to do with this? What am I to 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 pray for here? Um, you know, I um, I certainly have. Uh, every time I say say my prayers, I have a list of people that 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 I, I remember in my in my prayers. I always say I pray for Chris, Carrie, Mike, and Lisa. That was my uh, my small group at Credo, which is an Episcopal clergy gathering, and we made a covenant with each other that we would pray for each other. So I do that. I pray for my brother. I pray for my uh, for my for my sister-in-law, for my for my nephew. This is the place where where you can do that. So if you have an existing prayer practice, um, you can bring part of that here, right, into this um, in, into this space where where you would make um, your 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 personal prayers, your your personal petitions. I think that that's a really important thing to do because it would be it would be really easy. Um, to say, well, okay, you know, great, I'm, I, I pray the office here, but I've not, you know, I've not at all acknowledged um, anybody else in my life besides um, the things that the prayer book tells me to pray. Now, look, we're, we're Episcopalians. It's, 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 it's both ends so that we, so that we use a form, but also um, bring ourselves to, to this form of prayer. Um, that, that flow of, of the, uh, the prayers of the office continues um, with a prayer for Thanksgiving. Right. So if you look at, at, at the, the, the second half of the page 100, uh, 101, um, we pray uh, Thanksgiving for for the wonder of, of being one of God's creatures who gets to live and move and, and breathe in his beautiful creation. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for your creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. 
And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. That's a pretty wonderful way uh, to start the day, right? Um, to wake up and say, um, thank you, God, for, for, this, for this wonderful world and for the, for, the, for the way that you have created and restored. Um, you'll see on the, uh, on the uh, top of page 102, there's the, a prayer of, of St. Chrysostom. Um, again, this, this is a prayer that, that makes sense um, if you are praying with a group of people. You know, if we, um, so, you know, we could do a uh, evening prayer via Zoom uh, in, in a couple of weeks once we've figured out how to, how, how to use this, this tool. Um, it would make sense in that scenario to pray the prayer of, of St. Chrysostom. Um, Almighty God, you've given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And we have promised, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son, that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us. Grant us in this world knowledge of your truth and the age to come, life everlasting. Um, so if you if you think about, you know, what 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 prayer uh what praying by set set moments in the day and set prayers you know we are we are are tying together our our prayers with with all of the church that is continually um, at prayer so if you are you know arguably by that way of of thinking you could you could pray this by yourself but i just you know i can't get over that for myself uh, uh, when i'm when i'm praying by myself um, i i just can't quite um, say uh, you, you, you promised uh, where two or three are gathered when I'm the only one in, in my home praying. Um, but if you are, but if you remember, you know, the, the, the great cloud of witnesses and, and the way that, that, that our, our prayers are, um, are across time and space, then you, you can do it. But it, it just, it doesn't quite, I can't quite get with it, I should say. Um, so, so we conclude with this prayer of Thanksgiving after intercession and, and petition and, and all the different forms of prayer. We conclude with uh, that, that dismissal, uh, let us bless the Lord, thanks be to God. And then a final verse of scripture that is, um, is, a, is, a, um, is a way for us um, to end our prayer and for the day to begin. Um, so I, I wanted to share with you guys a pretty, uh, pretty important moment in, in my uh, my time at, at seminary, and, and and in the in the balance of time, we have about uh, ten minutes left. So if if um, I will go ahead, I I'll, I'll have the ability to uh, to unmute, um, and I will I will uh, uh, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna try to unmute everybody, um, and uh, if you have if you have questions, then you can uh, you can hop in. Um, and ask them at this time now. But um, when I was in seminary, I went to the Candler School of Theology at Emory University in Atlanta, and I had this wonderful class with um, with a a monk who teaches um, at Providence College up in uh, in in Rhode Island, and uh, it was called uh, it was called social uh, social social criticism. Something about uh, social social criticism and 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 monasticism, and uh, I think I'm 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 doing this right. So we went to the the uh, monastery of the Holy Spirit in Conyers, Georgia, which is about uh, well, with traffic now, it's probably over an hour, but it, it's about it's about an hour from Atlanta, and we went to this 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 monastery, and you know, I grew up in the in the Methodist church. So church to me meant going to church on Sunday mornings, right? I mean, you know, that's what, that's what I understood church to be. And we went um, to the monastery of the Holy Spirit and we had dinner with the brothers. And then we joined them for both, um, for both the service of, of Vespers and Compline, which is evening prayer. And also then the, 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 the prayers at the end of the day. 
and the the brothers um, told me they said when we make our our prayers um, we're praying for the world we're not just praying for uh, for those who are here at the monastery we are we are doing the 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 work of prayer of all people um, at these at these set times in the in the day and being in that beautiful space as I was in seminary um, it was it was a moment of, of, of revelation for me when I, when I discovered that uh, these, these, these men, these, um, these men who live in a cloistered life um, offer prayers on, on behalf of the world um, at six or seven times a day. Um, it, it taught me something about the value of, of sanctifying time. And it was really one of the moments when I first, um, well, not the first, but one of those moments of certainly nudging, you know, God saying, so look, you're, you know, there's something to this, this liturgy and the, and, and, and prayer in a way that, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you need to, to move towards that. Um, so I find there is a, a, a lot of, of comfort for me to think about, you know, right now it's, it's five till nine in central standard time. Um, a couple of time zones away, people are are making their their prayers before bed. On the other side of the world, people will soon be praying this office that 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 we have just walked through at the beginning of the day, and and in that way, it is it is our our joy and our task to to step into that stream of prayer, um, and 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 live into that reality that is is greater than the one that that we live in day to day. Um, so I just uh, uh, I I I say that to say there's there's something there's something to it. Um, so we have um, just a couple of couple of minutes left. Any any questions or any um, uh, any any comments at this point? Have any of you tried to uh, to use what what we have uh, been discussing um, in your in your prayer life or any any helpful questions uh, or anything that we could clarify at this point? Okay. Not a thing wrong with that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, I would just, um, I would encourage you to, to stay with it um, and, to, and to give yourself plenty of grace and to remember, <coughs> excuse me, um, to remember that um, nobody learns to be a, a master in a day, right? So if you are, if you are moving from um, no daily prayer into into some form of, of prayer um, you're getting it done right so so start make slow sustainable uh, steps you know I think um, I have a I have a tendency um, if I want to start something I, I I try to go from novice to master overnight um, and then I become quickly discouraged because I, I can't do what I think I should be able to do um, and that's not helpful. So if you are like me, um, don't do that. Take a take a small, small manageable chunk and 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 build build on it. Um, that's why I wanted to reiterate um, the some of, some of, of of what is envisioned in this in this prayer book office. The morning prayer is 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 optional um, and not and not required. Um, you know, don't forget if you. Um, if you are are going to take this on, try to do the work of of marking um, marking the book before you get going, because that is going to make it easier to, um, to to navigate and actually and actually pray the office rather than thumb through and, and, and find the, the next part of the office. That's uh, that's something that I would encourage you to do, and um, yeah, just uh, just um, stay with it, hang in there. Um, I hope that that this is. I uh, hope that this is helpful and uh, and edifying, and uh, I think um, the most helpful thing for us would be um, next week um, to move into the the content of um, of, of evening prayer. And again, um, we'll, we'll use right too, just because that's what we have used um, for for morning prayer. And um, I would I would tell you um, if it is any. Uh, any strength and consolation to you um, that that first 
uh, most difficult thing we have already done in talking about uh, what we talked about in that first week, the different ways of, of making sense and how to use it. When next week we, we start to talk about um, evening prayer, you're going to say to yourself, uh, well, a lot of the stuff sounds familiar because um, you, you open the day in prayer and you close the day in prayer, right? That's something that, that, that all people can do. Not everyone is called to life at, at, life, at uh, the monastery of uh, the Holy Spirit in Conyers, Georgia, where those, where those brothers would, would make prayers at six or seven points during, during the day. Um, but, but you have already started the, the, the uh, work of, of understanding how to, um, how to pray um, e morning prayer. And if you can do that, you can pray uh, evening prayer as well. So um, then, um, um, you know, my sense is we will start to kind of pick up speed um, because it, it will feel uh, familiar. Um, and then I think we can, um, following uh, our time in, in, in evening prayer uh, next week, we will be able to spend, um, if we have enough time, we'll be able to spend a little bit of, of time around uh, the, the order for noonday prayer and order for Compline. But I got to tell you, if, you are, if you're reading closely um, and you are, are starting to, to get familiar with this portion of the prayer book, um, you, could, you could pick that up. Um, tonight, right? I mean, if you wanted to, uh, to pray Compline on page 127, um, you now have the tools to make that happen tonight. Um, so um, that is, uh, is, is hopefully a, a helpful, helpful way to think about prayer and to pray specifically um, in this form. And um, we will, uh, that uh, the uh, Zoom uh, link will be the same. It, it's a reoccurring meeting. So I will catch you guys uh, next Wednesday evening. And uh, yeah. until then, uh, be well. And uh, don't, uh, don't hesitate to contact me, email me. If you guys need, need any, um, if you want to talk about this stuff or St. John's or, or, or any of it, that's, that's what I'm here to do. So um, I bid you all um, good night. And I uh, pray that you will, you will rest well and be refreshed. And uh, if you're feeling up to it, take a stab at, uh, at the morning prayer tomorrow morning. Um, you will find that, you, that you're more capable of it than you even um, might anticipate. Um, and if you, if you get bogged down, then call me and, and, I'll, and I'll see what we can do to, to get, you, get you into fighting shape. So uh, good night. Appreciate your time and uh, see you soon. God bless.